All right, hi everyone. My name is Matthew Kress of Kress Dietetics, and this is going to be a video presentation on the microbiology behind yogurt. How we have inoculated milk, and we incubate it for a certain amount of time, and we end up with a final yogurt product that is completely set. Uh, what is the microbiology behind this? What kind of bacteria uh, are involved? And we're going to also briefly touch on the proteins, casein and whey, because they do have a relevant um, uh, metabolism to the bacteria that are fermenting the milk product. And so let's dive in. So uh, getting started, when we are going to decide to make uh, a yogurt, we are going to heat our milk up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And that has a purpose of taking the natural proteins in our milk, and it is going to quote unquote relax them. It's going to denature the proteins. And that's what heat does, is it will denature the proteins. And so once it hits 180, we're going to denature those proteins. That's the only reason why we're doing that. And also we will clear the terrain of other uh, bacteria if there are any in the milk. Uh, we do not want to boil the milk, pay attention to that. Uh, and then after it hits 180, we are going to cool it down to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we are going to take a previous batch of yogurt, uh, and we're going to use one teaspoon per liter or quart of milk, and we will inoculate our previous batch of yogurt into our milk that is at 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And for our Europeans, that is about 46 degrees Celsius. You can see I have a cheat sheet right here. Uh, and so when we are inoculating with our previous uh, batch of yogurt, we are essentially introducing two main bacteria species in uh, our milk. And the first species is Streptococcus thermophilus. Second species is Lactobacillus delbrucki uh, bulgaricus. The subspecies is uh, bulgaricus. Both of these bacteria are required in order for you to make yogurt. If you are trying to inoculate your milk with something other than these two bacteria, you are not making yogurt. Full stop. If you are trying to inoculate your milk with a probiotic that is not one of these two, you are essentially making a different fermented milk product, which is fantastic and can be done, but it is not yogurt. So please pay attention to that terminology. Uh, there are uh, a wonderful array of fermented milk products that exist around the world. Uh, you have kefir and you have, well, you have your yogurt and then you have, uh, different milk ferments, depending on the region that you're from. You even go into cheeses if you like. And then there are uh, just a wide variety of options. But in order for your final product to be legally called yogurt, you must have these two main bacteria uh, species in your yogurt. And these two species have a specific function. Uh, the first one is uh, lacto, uh, is the Streptococcus thermophilus, excuse me, and this one has a main purpose of acidifying the milk. What that means is that once your milk is at 115 and you've inoculated and you put it into your oven or your yogurt incubator, uh, the Streptococcus thermophilus is going to act first and it will take the milk pH, which is at about maybe a 6.5, it's very lightly acidic, your milk, and it's going to bring it down to about a 4.6. That is the one of the main jobs. It's not the only job, but it is the main highlight job of the milk, uh, of the Streptococcus thermophilus. It is just going to acidify the milk. Then your second bacteria, once your milk has come down to about a 4.6 uh, pH in acidity, the second one, the Lactobacillus delbrucki, uh, Bulgaricus is then going to activate. It only activates at that 4.6 pH and it will solidify your yogurt. And so what happens is, is you get this two set series of uh, bacteria and their action. You have an acidification and then you have a solidification. Uh, and then once you have a final solid product, you will then get a set yogurt that is done and has been successfully made. And so 
there are two other main points that are really important when we are talking about uh, optimizing the action and metabolism of these two bacteria. The Streptococcus thermophilus has a preferred temperature range. Mind you, I am saying preferred. Uh, that does not mean that it cannot ferment outside of this range. It just has a preferred range and it operates best within this range. And that range is 95 to 108 degrees Fahrenheit, which translates to 35 to 42 degrees Celsius for my uh, non-Americans. And, um, and so you can see that you have 98 to about 100, uh, 95 to about 108 degrees Fahrenheit for your first one. The second one, Lactobacillus vulgaricus, has a preferred temperature range of 109 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which translates to 43 to 46 degrees Celsius. And so that has this type of preferred temperature range. And so what you can tell is that there is a sweet spot right here in your uh, two bacteria in the preferred temperature range. And this is very common knowledge for those who have quite a bit of experience in the yogurt fermenting community is that about 108 degrees Fahrenheit to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and that would be about your 43, 44 degrees Celsius. Um, that is the sweet spot. And uh, I will speak more on a personal note. I have noticed uh, through my years of making yogurts and having mastered the art of what is yogurt making, uh, whenever I am making yogurt and my thermometer reads 108 to 110, I have never, 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 never uh, had a failed yogurt come out. Uh, I have accidentally over uh, fermented it, which means it's going a little bit too far. And in that case, if you go too far, it'll start to become maybe slightly grainy. It'll start to separate a little bit easier between the casein and the whey, but we'll talk about in that, that a little bit later. But uh, every single time I am in that temperature sweet spot, I always have a successful end product uh, of my set yogurt. And so uh, what you're going to want to pay attention to is that as you are getting started on your yogurt journey, or if you're interested on just the microbiology, you want to hit that sweet spot to make sure that you are uh, giving your bacteria the best environment for them to thrive and create a uh, consistent set final product. And so uh, we are going to now move on to the next section of the video, which is more on the proteins present in your uh, milk and yogurt. So milk, as a base, has two main proteins in it, casein and whey. Uh, whey is very, uh, is very uh, familiar for a lot of uh, athletes because you can have a whey protein powder, and that is just milk that's been separated. Uh, the whey, which is a clear liquid, will then, uh, if you dry that out, you will eventually get a, if you completely dehydrate it, you will get a whey protein powder, and that's what that is. Uh, casein, for my language aficionados, uh, you will see that there is a base, which is case, and then in your in certain languages, you see that that is a word for cheese. And so, uh, what is happening in your uh, protein metabolism through these two bacteria? The second bacteria, the Lactobacillus delbrueckii bulgaricus, once it hits a pH, once the milk hits a pH of 4.6, that one will activate. And what it is going to do is it is going to play on the uh, casein that is present in the yogurt. Technically, if I were to get, if I were to open my yogurt that I've already started, uh, you will see that it is a final set product. And if I were to dig a hole, you would eventually see whey protein um, that would be extracted, that would, that would uh, be secreted from my yogurt. And that is a very normal byproduct. I'm not sure if you can be able to tell, but that clear liquid, and I have other videos on whey, if you're interested in looking at that, um, but that is whey. And what that means is that this white section, all of this yogurt that you're looking at, 
This is solidified casing. So your casing has gone from a liquid form into a solidified form. And so when your Lactobacillus delbrueckii bulgaricus is solidifying the acidified milk, it is effectively playing on the protein structure on the uh, casein. Casein has what we call an isoelectric point uh, of 4.6. What that means is it precipitates. And what that means in more layman terms is that it starts to separate. And so the uh, lactobacillus is going to act on the pH of the milk even further. And the casein will start to separate in this way. And when it starts to separate, you will then eventually get a solid product. And that is how you know that you have a successful final product when your casein has completely solidified. And that is what that means. This yogurt that we're looking at, this solid product, this is all solidified casein. And that is the sign of a uh, end product that has been through the entire process. And so these are the two things that you want to pay attention to when you are making yogurt. And this can also help uh, beginners understand what is actually going on. And so uh, finally, to uh, kind of bring it all home, if you are making yogurt and you're getting started and you find that your yogurt is not setting in the uh, oven or yogurt incubator, uh, and you still have a liquidy product, you may want to consider the preferred temperature range of your lactobacillus. Remember that that temperature range is 109 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, 43 to 46 degrees Celsius. And if, you're back, and if your yogurt is not setting and it's very liquid and it's been a while, crank the temperature up because uh, up to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and you will see that you will activate even farther the lactobacillus and your yogurt will set usually within the 20 to 30 minutes, noticeably more from when it was unset and you were checking on it, maybe being frustrated. Why is it my yogurt setting or why is my yogurt running? That would be the main reason. And so uh, I hope you have enjoyed this more informative, scientific uh, approach to yogurt and what is actually going on in a micro uh, in a microbiology sense of the term. Uh, and if you have any questions, please ask them below in the comments. And once again, my name is Matthew Kress of Kress Dietetics, and I want to thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.